My name is uh, Charlie Beckham. I'm the mayor's uh, group executive for neighborhoods, and uh, we've got yet another uh, good news conference this morning. We always love it when we have charts where the bars are going down, except when it's revenues. <laughs> so we've got a good story this morning. Um, you know, for the last four and a half, almost five years, uh, Mayor Duggan has had uh, our district management function uh, in each of the seven districts basically fighting blight. Uh, and one of the leading causes uh, of blight in the neighborhoods has been tax foreclosures, where people are losing their houses uh, for lack of the ability to pay taxes or whatever those reasons have been. And so that leaves a vacant house, uh, which leads to blight. And so it's been something that we've really been uh, concerned about uh, in the neighborhoods, and I think we've addressed it uh, through uh, Wayne County Treasurer's office and uh, the mayor's office with uh, an outstanding program we're going to bring you up to date on uh, this morning. So without further ado, let me bring up the Wayne County Treasurer, Eric Sabri. Thank you very much, Charlie. I wanted to uh, give you some new numbers uh, this year. Before I do that, I want to thank all the partners that we have. We have a tremendous partnership uh, with the Wayne County Treasurer's Office. We have all of our commissioners, our county executives really working hard. We have the mayors, including Mayor Duggan, and his task force all the mayors and township supervisors in Wayne County are working with us to reduce foreclosures. This year we had a reduction of 36% from last year. 4,676 foreclosures total in Wayne County. And that's uh, 4,188 in Detroit. And only 701 owner-occupied properties in foreclosure in the city of Detroit. Of course, our goal was zero owner-occupied properties going to the auction. We didn't achieve that goal, but we're significantly less than last year. Our partners have worked tirelessly. We have uh, community groups, United Community Housing Coalition, you'll hear from them later. They did the lion's share of the work. We had others helping door to door, workshops all since all throughout the summer, in the fall, in the winter, letting people know the options that we have available. These efforts have worked. We knocked on over 5,200 doors since March, letting people know that property was still in danger of foreclosure. So these outreach efforts have worked, and our partners have, have really stepped up to the table. There's no one in the country that we can go to and ask how to do this. We had to figure it out ourselves. So I want to thank them really from the bottom of my heart. If I may use a medical analogy, I would say that we've been working in the emergency room for the last few years, and last year, I thought we were headed to recovery, and now I can say we're going to rehab, and in the future, near future, we should be in preventative care mode, letting people know what they have to do, working with them so they can stay out of this foreclosure cycle. So I want to thank everyone. Also, I want to tell you that we had um, uh, been requested to extend the time for the right of refusal, which you're going to hear more about in a minute. For the, where the city has an opportunity to take properties before they go to the auction. We did extend that time to July 31st, and also we're uh, going to loan four of our employees to the United Community Housing Coalition until that deadline so they can help expedite the, ex the application process for all eligible uh, taxpayers who would be able to take advantage of this, this right of refusal program. So I want to turn this back over to the, the mayor's office and let the mayor and the United Community Housing Coalition talk a little bit more about uh, what's available. But I want to thank, thank everyone again. And we also are helping to identify people who are eligible. We have a veteran that we spoke with yesterday, Mr. Williams, and uh, he's going to uh, also apply to uh, this program. Thank you very much. Well, this is an example of what happens when city and county government and private agencies uh, all work together. Uh, it was just a few years ago, we had a tsunami of foreclosures, uh, and 6,400 owner-occupied houses were foreclosed on. We have no prospect of increasing the population in this community if we keep losing people through foreclosure. And so uh, we passed a critical piece of legislation that allowed the treasurer to extend payment plans uh, to homeowners over a four-year period, and Treasurer Eric Sabre has been the most aggressive in the state of Michigan with the outreach. You can't turn on the TV or look at the billboards 
without seeing that you've got a treasurer who is doing everything that he can uh, to keep people in their houses. But that wasn't enough if you don't know what's available to you. And so in February, when it looked like somewhere in the range of 5,000 occupied houses uh, were going into foreclosure, a team spread out across the city. Uh, and I can't say enough about the United Community Housing Coalition. What Ted Phillips and Michelle Oberholzel did was remarkable. They led the effort. Vicki Kavari and the district managers in the city of Detroit got out there and knocked doors. We had a couple of our council members, Gabe Leland and Raquel Castaneda Lopez, organized door knocking teams, along with 30 neighborhood associations who went out and talked to their own neighbors, and then the treasurer hired people and went out, and they went to every single door and said, there's help available to you. Here's how you access it. And that's how we got down to 701, which is almost a 90% drop. And I think we're still gonna get below 700 before this year's over. We still got uh, a few more weeks. But the team made great progress. The biggest source last year of occupied home foreclosures was rental properties. You have a, a large number last year, 1,900 landlords, where the tenant was in the house paying their rent every month, and a yellow uh, sign goes up on their house saying the house is being foreclosed. The tenant didn't do anything wrong. They're paying their rent. The landlord was pocketing the money. And so with the help of Quicken, who, who really initiated this, uh, and then UCHC stepped up in a big way, uh, we are now running a program called Right of First Refusal, where a, uh, or a tenant can actually buy the house and stay in it. And so uh, the UCHC folks have been out knocking on doors. They must have held 15 or 20 workshops on how this works. And you've already seen the foreclosed rental properties drop from 1,900 to 1,400. And people still have till the end of July. If you are a renter in a house that's being foreclosed, you can still call UCHC. And in a partnership between the city, the county, Quicken Loans, uh, you still have uh, the potential to do that. And uh, you're going to get a chance to hear from the Wilson Sims family. Uh, but this is what this is all about. You had a family who had been paying their rent every month, their house was being foreclosed. They said, I gave up, we're going to move to Ohio. And then somebody from UCHC came out, knocked on their door, and said, You know, you could own your own house. And you're not at all sure when somebody's knocking on your door about these offers. Uh, but after going through the UCHC workshops, they're on a path. I know it's not done yet, uh, but I think we're gonna, they're going to be on a path to not be moving out of town and leave us with yet another vacant house in this city. Uh, they're on a path to owning that house and taking care of it. And that's what we're doing over and over because the folks here uh, are working together. And so thank you uh, to everybody who has been such a key part of that. And with that, I'll turn it over to a guy who went out and knocked himself on the doors of people in danger of home foreclosure, Councilman Gabe Leland. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and to all the partners that are here today uh, to help our residents who stayed. Uh, God bless you, and this is truly an effort uh, where we're putting all of our efforts together and working together. Uh, in 2005, I got elected to the Michigan Legislature. Many of you know that. Um, and at a time, uh, UCHC had very little resources, had very little staff. Uh, they figured out who was losing their home uh, to foreclosure through the Wayne County uh, process. They came, they knocked on uh, the doors of the state legislature at the time. Uh, it was during that time that I uh, announced our Defend Our Neighbors program. We realized uh, that it would be great to take the issue to the streets, right? Uh, knocking on doors, letting folks know that uh, they're at risk of losing their home. And the stories uh, that we heard on that, uh, during that campaign on, on Defend Our Neighbors was just incredible. Um, and so this effort has been um, an incredible one over these last uh, 13 years. Um, at that time, never before did I think that, that we would have the partnerships today that we have uh, in city government in terms of the resources that we're able to uh, put together with the nonprofit community, uh, with or great organizations like Quicken Loans, you know, who have stepped up with volunteers, um, you know, residents that have fallen on hard times and residents that have stayed. Um, government is there for them like never before. and so. We're using uh, the program of the right uh, of first refusal. We're using um, dedicated volunteers to go out and, and, and teach residents about the poverty exemption form. 
Um, many residents in this city, uh, because we know that we have high levels of poverty, uh, for those that, that own their own home, they have an ability to fill out the poverty exemption form. And we are making it easier than ever. And I have to uh, consistently give credit to um, the UCHC, uh, many uh, people in the mayor's office that have realized you know, that, that we gotta just take it to the streets. And that's exactly what we did. And so uh, Gwen Lewis from my office uh, is, is heavily involved uh, in this effort. Uh, I wanna thank the treasurer's office as well. Um, residents, they know that, that government is here for them. And, and we no longer are gonna allow them to fall uh, uh, fall under and, and, and lose their home. We saw what happened with the um, mortgage foreclosure crisis in this city. Uh, and we know about the blight and, and all those other things. And so this is our opportunity. And I'm just so excited to be a part of it. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Councilman. Um, you know, these efforts uh, in the public sector certainly cannot be fully successful without the help of uh, outside and nonprofit agencies in Detroit. And in this case, and you heard the mayor re refer to that and the, the work that uh, United uh, Community Housing Coalition with Ted Phillips and Michelle Oberhauser um, spearheaded with that. And so representing them this morning is Michelle Oberhauser. Michelle, come on up. Good morning. So Ted Phillips couldn't be here today. We, we've flipped a coin. There are 40 people in this today's workshop that we have who are trying to sign up for the program to be able to purchase the homes that they already live in before they go up for auction. United Community Housing Coalition does incredible work. We have been around for 40 years, and the Tax Foreclosure Prevention Project is the biggest component of what we do. Most of the year, we're trying to help homeowners stay in their homes and prevent foreclosures. We still are seeing tens of thousands of properties getting foreclosure notices every year. And the way that we get those numbers down, as the treasurer was mentioning, is through a lot of hard work. I call it radical paperwork, you know, filling out those forms for people paperwork that can really change the life of whether or not you're able to stay in a home or not. Uh, but many times, we're not able to fully stop the foreclosure, both in the cases of owners, low-income owners mostly, and of renters and everyone in between who's living in a home that for some reason is now up for uh, foreclosure. In many, for many years, uh, UCHC has had a program where we help people buy the homes that they're already in, in the auction. Uh, we've helped about 3,000 people buy their homes in this way for the past 10 years or so. The program's been around since 2003, actually. And uh, it's, it's wonderful when it works, but it doesn't always work. When I talk to my clients about this, I let them know. It's like that T-shirt, Detroit versus everybody. You have no preference uh, benefit over anyone else to purchase a home, whether or not you put a roof on it, raise your child in it, paid a 30-year mortgage on it. You, it's you versus everybody. And so unfortunately, we lose a lot of homes that way. Uh, we do see a lot of those negative consequences of a person moving out, the home getting scrapped, or just building the cycle uh, where we have now uh, a lot more renters than owners in neighborhoods and we're losing some of those key anchor uh, residents in, in our neighborhoods. So we're so grateful for the opportunity to reverse that script and say, actually, we do recognize that you, the person who's made this your home, you do have an additional uh, value to uh, this neighborhood and we want to help you to stay there and to become the owner and if this home is going to go up for sale We want you to have the first option and we didn't change a single law to do this We just worked with our relationships with the city with the county with others We're so grateful for that support and their willingness to trust us last year This was a pilot program. We did it for the first time. We helped 80 families buy the homes They already live in they were saved from the, the competition of the auction. They had the dignity of buying their home in a sane and slow and safe way. Um, they're paying that back. We're celebrating those homeowners now. And based on that success, we're doing it again this year. We've expanded it not just to non-owners, but to also homeowners as well. Um, and we're working very hard. The door knocking is one thing, the outreach is one thing, but then we have to do the work. People are in our office, they have to complete a workshop, they have to save money, we have to do home inspections. There's a great deal of work that's needed, and so all of the support it, we're very grateful for, the extra time we're grateful for. Um, and so I wanna just thank all of our partners again. Uh, City Council has been so supportive, the Mayor's Office, the Department of Neighborhoods, Vicki Kovari's been incredible. Um, all of the groups that we've uh, had have volunteered and knocked on doors, 
uh, the treasurer's office, especially for this deadline extension and other ways that they've worked with us and been open to communication. All of the funders, people who put up the money so that people even have uh, this option. The government can say yes, but we do need money to spend to do that. So we're grateful for Quicken Loans Community Investment Fund and other groups that have put forward money to say that they value having home ownership. We've just heard some really sad news about the loss in home ownership, especially African American home ownership in Detroit, in Michigan, in the country at large. And it's so important to be taking aggressive measures to reverse that trend. And um, grateful to be part of it. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle. As a, you can see, a, a lot of effort, uh, both public and private sector, has gone into uh, this initiative. Uh, and one of the things about doing these kinds of efforts on behalf of Detroit is they really start to come alive uh, when you have a real live family to tell the story of how they've benefited from all the efforts that have gone on here. And so we're fortunate this morning uh, to have an actual family uh, of a renter who uh, uh, was renting in a foreclosed home and was able to purchase that home. And so uh, join me in welcoming Rachel Williams Sims and her family up to tell her story. Rachel, come on up. Hi, everybody. Um, um, I just want to say, um, first of all, I'm very nervous. Um, but we were, um, and I know you guys probably see me get a little emotional back there as um, the mayor was talking, but um, we were the renters. Um, the landlord actually came in this past September and just said, hey, I'm not paying a property tax on no more. I don't want nothing to do with it. And we have been in this house um, almost a year. We had actually been on the block um, almost two years. And um, when we moved into this house, we had moved in it from a um, two-bedroom, um, two-family flat. And of course, you can see it's four of us. We had so many issues with houses and, you know, not not being able to stay in them, not because we wasn't paying rent, but just certain situations, I'm gonna just say that. Um, I wanted stability for my daughters, um, stability for, you know, just the whole family. And um, I was ready to leave. I told my husband, I said, listen, I'm ready to go. Um, he was like, no, 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 you know, been in Detroit forever, you know. And I'm like, I'm just ready to go. We just need stability. And I'm tired of, you know, not being stable, just going, you know, moving every year. And it seemed like every year around March we moving. So when the opportunity came, I actually got um, the number from my neighbor who lives next door to me. Um, and I actually caught the um, housing collision. And I went down there, and um, they told me about the RRR program. And I was like, OK, there is hope. And so you know, I went home. I told my husband, you know, I was really excited. And so they told me a amount of money that I needed to put up, save. So out of every little check, whether it was $20, $30, that's what I put up until I was able to you know, put all that money in to what you know, I had to give them. Um, I appreciate um, Michelle so much. Um, I had a lot of questions. I was unsure, but I kept um, my faith. Um, and so um, anybody who, you know, doesn't know about faith, you need to get some. I'm going to say that. <laughs> um, because I was literally ready to leave Detroit. But I said, you know what, I'm going to put my faith in this program. I really didn't know, and I'm just being honest, I didn't know too much about it. Um, but I said, you know what, I'm going to put my faith in them, and that's what I did. And I'm so excited about being a first-time um, home buyer. Um, I'm young, but I'm kind of like old school as far as my kids, and I want them to understand that, you know, you just got to kind of, you know, go out there and do what you, you know, have to do, and you can have something. And just to keep the faith in Detroit also, you know, I know people are like, you know, but... <laughs> Keep the faith in Detroit, you know, and um, go out here and see what's out here, because I wasn't using a lot of the resources either. But with the ROR program and the United Housing Coalition, um, you know, anybody who is a tenant, you know, go out there. If you know the house is in foreclosure, go out there and um, see what can be done about it. Call the United Housing Coalition and try to save your house if you love the house, because we love our house. <laughs> Thank you. Isn't that a great story, huh? 
This is what it's all about. Thank you all very much. Uh, are there any uh, uh, questions? That ends our press conference this morning. Any questions for anybody that's up here? Yes, okay, so if you are living in a home that was foreclosed this year by the Wayne County Treasurer, technically the Wayne County Treasurer is the owner at this point, and uh, what you need to do is come to our office. We prefer that you come in rather than call. You can call, but that's going to be a delay. We have, I uh, have maxed out on my voicemails on my phone right now. So come down and see us, 2727 Second Avenue is our address. We're at suite number 313. Uh, we have walk-in hours, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning. So right now, by the way, is a walk-in time. Um, you can walk in and just get some help. But if you want to come and just go straight to one of our workshops where we can begin to tell you specifically about this program, we have those next week. Next week, hopefully, um, will be the last week that we do this. We, we always say it's the last, and then sometimes we try to fit in more. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning next week at 11 a.m., Tuesday at 2 p.m., and Thursday at 5 p.m. we're going to have workshops. If you were the owner, or you can, may consider yourself still the owner, but technically you're not. If you're the owner, you need to bring all the documents that you would need to fill out that poverty exemption. So we need your ID, your deed, your proof of income, all of your bills and expenses. Um, it can be kind of complicated, but that's the quickest way to say it. Um, and then if you were not the owner, your tenant, you need to bring in proof that you live there and your ID. And everybody should be bringing in as much money as they can um, $500 money order to try to deposit. That's a good faith down payment to show that you're uh, interested in buying the home. And it's kind of scary to tell someone to bring money to a place they've never been before. You don't have to deposit if you're not uh, interested, but might as well bring it if you're interested, and so that way we have that available. We won't know the total cost to purchase the homes until probably August. Uh, we do know the city's right of refusal price for each property. There are some program costs, and we don't make each person pay the taxes exactly for their home because it's not necessarily based on the value of the home, and we don't want to make someone uh, pay if their landlord, for example, wasn't paying taxes. We we have a way of kind of spreading the costs out. Last year, the purchase prices were 2500 to 5500 and we're making it as affordable as possible, but uh, we don't know yet what people's prices will be. Uh, the advantage of the poverty exemption, well, if you, the state of Michigan has a law which says that if for reasons of income you can't pay your property taxes, the city can provide you, must provide you an exemption. So if you are currently an owner and you cannot pay your property taxes, you can get this exemption. This is a way to stay in your home. You could lose your home for those taxes. And the exemption is not retroactive, so you have to get it every year in the year that you need relief. So if you just got a property tax bill this July and you cannot pay it, and that's exactly the situation that you would be seeking assistance to lower your bill that way. For the purposes of this program, it's almost a moot point. Why are you getting your taxes reduced for a property that you've already lost? But we're using this as a qualifier to show that um, you weren't intentionally not paying your taxes. You actually couldn't. You have a low income verifiably with the Board of Review, and uh, therefore we're going to help you with, with this program. It was a combination of things. One, there's a little, the economy is better. It's a little better. People are more aware. And then the hard work that we do with all the partners that we have, our staff, tremendous staff, uh, letting people know what their options are, and also reminding them of, of what they have to do. We have, we've, we've done a lot of, out, made a lot of outgoing phone calls from our office to remind people. In September, we're going to start text messaging. Everyone has a payment plan just like Sprint and everybody else that does that, letting people know that um, your payment plan is due. Because we find that a lot of people who are losing their properties are losing them because they're not paying attention. It's not only because they don't have money. They're not paying attention to what's going on. So that's part of our, our uh, task, is to, to make sure that folks know what they're doing and that they're, if they're thinking about this, this uh, property that they own, that's probably their largest asset. 
have one very quick, uh, another real life example of uh, our, one of our veterans uh, that, that are a part of this program and Mr. Obi who is representing um, the uh, veteran homeowners here just to say a few brief comments. Mr. Obi, come on up. Thank you very much. I love to talk, <laughs> but I'm going to be brief. I have a friend named Ronald Williams who has been declared 100% disabled by the federal government and the VA. He is a Vietnam veteran, and every year I've been helping him out by helping him fill out this state tax commission affidavit of disabled veterans exemption. Apparently, either I missed the tag on one of these submissions, or maybe it was misplaced during the administrative whatever. I went to downtown and I spoke to, I had an opportunity to speak to Mr. Sabri, and he advised that this would be happening. So my friend Ronald Williams and I are here now so we can take advantage of this opportunity because he is disabled, he does not work, he cannot work, he doesn't have a salary, he gets a tiny stipend from the VA and I'm quite willing to help him. I'm also involved in a youth program here in the city this is our 40th anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. I want to thank the mayor. Thank Mayor Duggan. He's leaving. Thank you very much. All right. Well, we have, we, uh, you know, we could go through every single uh, parcel, you know, one by one, if, but we don't have the time or the, or the, the energy of the staff to do that. But uh, if you have particular cases you want to ask about, we don't have a problem going over it. We uh, review these properties on a regular basis. Uh, payment plans are due, and I don't know really uh, how else to answer that. Okay, well, how many do you have in the we right now, on the, the interest reduction payment plans, we have 13,300 people that are still on the interest of 6% per year for owner occupants. Now, as far as the other plans, they have to be renewed every year. The interest reduction plans are good for five years, so I could give you that number, but. Each year, people apply for the, uh, the non-interest reduction, the regular 18% interest. So we have to give you those as they come in. It'll, it'll, be, it'll be somewhere in the neighborhood of 20,000, 23,000, including the interest reduction plans. Also, I want to clear up one, one stat. Uh, we had a total in Detroit of 701 owner-occupied properties in foreclosure. But the total of occupied properties is $14.99. So the, the difference is the, the rent landlords, the non-owner occupants. So it's only about 800, a little less than uh, 800 of the non-owner occupants. So the total number is $14.99. That wasn't the, uh, the landlords. Yeah. Okay. Right. Mr. Sabri, I'll, I'll be around for questions later, but uh, thank you very much for coming out. Hope you enjoyed the press conference. Thank you all. Have a good weekend.